I'm Sam Wright, and I'm with Chip Mao from F&M Enterprises, and today we're going to talk about a revolutionary product for your model aircraft called Stitz Light. Chip, what's the background of Stitz Light? I actually came from the full-scale industry. Ray Stitz invented it in the early 60s, and Ray Stitz was a very prolific home builder, designer, um, entrepreneur. Ray invented the process, uh, something to replace grade A linen. We were having problems getting grade A linen. Grade A linen and dope just weren't giving us the quality we wanted in the home build industry. So Ray uh, came up with a process that is all based on polyester. The fabric is polyester and all of the chemicals that we use in the process are polyester based. They're a solvent based product and the solvents in the paints and the chemicals actually chemically bond to the fabric and they bond to each layer of paint. I see. It's now, will it be fuel proof and waterproof and all the things that we look for in our model aircraft? We've tested it up to 40 and 50 percent nitro. It works great up to 20 percent. The boaters that are using the more exotic fuels with 40 and 50 percent nitromethane, it will begin to affect it at that point unless you clear coat it with a two-part polyurethane finish. We have a, a clear aerothane which will protect it from the high nitro fuels. Now Stitz Light is formulated differently or in a different configuration for model aircraft use. This, you wouldn't want to run out to the hangar, the airport, and buy a can of this stuff and get the same results, right? It wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be exactly the same. And uh, the reason it wouldn't is every can of paint that you buy from us, every product is ready to spray from the can. Now if you went to the airport and you purchased a can of paint, it's not going to have the blush retarder in it. It's not going to have the reducer in it. Although it will say it's ready to spray, it actually needs a temperature stabilizer. Right. And we're going to talk about all these products and we're going to show you the process on how to apply this. Now, uh, Chip, what are all the different surfaces we can put this material on? Any surface actually uh, used in modeling. You could put it over fiberglass. Uh, we, uh, we specialize in fabric coverings but uh, the paints can be used over fiberglass, composites, metal, um, anything used in modeling can be painted with our paints. The most important question, what about weight? This is actually a lighter weight process than if you're using epoxies. The disclaimer we have to use is if you're going to paint the airplane, um, our paints are going to be lighter than the other processes and the reason is it's a solvent based paint. If you're going to paint with epoxy, Pretty much what you spray on the airplane stays on the airplane weight-wise with epoxies because epoxies cure, they don't evaporate. Our product is solvent-based and about 75% of what you spray on the aircraft is going to evaporate away. And as far as the uh, plastics and the films and the iron-on coverings, uh, we can't compete with them weight-wise, but they can't compete with us for strength. There's nothing stronger in the model industry than the Stitz Light process. Can we apply it with various techniques, brush? It can be brushed, it can be sprayed. Uh, we have guys that brush the color, the polytone. Uh, it acts like uh, any solvent-based paint. It dries very quickly. If you apply it with a brush, you don't want to go back with the brush. Once you've applied it, keep moving on. And it can be brushed. It just takes a very delicate hand to do it. We recommend spraying it. Use about uh, 30, 40 pounds of pressure with any medium spray gun, touch-up gun, um, doesn't matter. You can use a, a Pache or a Binks. Uh, the, uh, the small brushes work just fine. As far as uh, the first coat, it says poly brush. The reason Ray named it poly brush was he wants you to use a chip brush or a stiffer brisk brush to actually work the poly brush through the fabric. That gives you better adhesion, gives you a secondary adhesion as the poly brush soaks through the fabric, any place the fabric is touching the wood, it gives you a secondary bond then. It can be sprayed. Uh, you are less apt to get brush marks if you spray it. Uh, we recommend, uh, unless it's something that you really need adhesion over the wood surface, we recommend spraying all three coats, the poly brush, the poly spray, and the poly tone. Now we can apply this not just to scale models, we can apply it to our aerobatic airplanes, our, like our TOC aircraft, uh, our pattern planes, we can actually apply this to a wide range of model aircraft. We're not limited to, say for instance, a big Piper Cub or whatever. Absolutely. I uh, personally, the first aircraft I put it on was a 40-sized Seamaster, an Ace Seamaster. Um, I needed 
something uh, was waterproof. Being a vinyl, it's very waterproof. Obviously, it's uh, tested for fuel proof. The Seamaster has a pylon mounted engine, hence, you have lots of raw fuel dripping and burnt fuel dripping. So, uh, it works perfectly well on both sport application, scale application, aerobatics. Uh, talking about the weights again. We can't compete weight-wise with a film covering. There's just no way to get any painted process as light as the films are. But if you're going to paint your airplane, there's no lighter process than the solvent-based right. process we use. Well, we talked earlier, and you'd mentioned if your aircraft is that close on the balance, that a little extra few ounces is going to make a difference, it's probably going to be pretty touchy to fly anyway. Being a professional pilot and making my living flying airplanes, if the model is that critical and you can't afford a couple of ounces of paint on it, I don't want to be around when you test fly it. It's going to be uh, <laughs> that, pretty critical. That's pretty true of a real aircraft too, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, we're going to get into the actual applications with the Stitz Light. We're going to cover a wing for an Anderson Kingfisher. It's your basic quarter scale cub wing. It has a few hard points on it, and the hard points are to mount floats and to mount your struts. We're going to show how to get around some of the corners with uh, finishing tapes and how to do the, the uh, covering. As you can see, it's just your basic framework wing. The fabric that we sell comes 60 inches wide with a five foot width of fabric. There's virtually not a model out there that uh, you can't cover with one width of fabric. The warp and the weave don't matter. You can lay it any way. You can lay it on either span-wise or you can lay it on cord-wise. The way we recommend doing it on a constant cord wing, such as a cub wing like this, is to cover the trailing edge, attach the trailing edge first, and after you've attached the trailing edge, simply wrap the fabric all the way around the leading edge and reattach it to the trailing edge again. What you want in this process, every place you can do it, is you want a polyester to polyester bond. You want a fabric to fabric bond. We're going to apply it with the Polytac cement. Polytac bonds polyester to polyester. The FAA says if you have a two inch overlap, it's as good as a sewn seam on a full scale aircraft. And that's good enough for my models. The way to use the Polytac is to put it in a small container. We're going to use a little cup, sort of like this one here. Put a little bit of the polytac into the cup and then thin it just a little bit with MEK. And by a little bit, I mean merely dip the brush into the MEK and then stir it into the polytac. That's going to help it bond a little bit and it's going to uh, thin it out because it is quite thick. It dries very, very fast, so we recommend only putting it on maybe 10 or 12 inches at a time. If you put it on any further than that, if you were to put the polytac all the way around the wing, it's going to dry before you get the fabric attached to it. It's better if you can apply the Polytech and after you apply it, pull the fabric over and you want to see those little sweat beads come through the fabric of the cement. Then you know you've got enough cement for a bond. You don't need to apply it over the ribs. You need to apply it only on the ends and the edges of the wing. If you apply it to the ribs and then you heat shrink it, you're going to pull the ribs together and that's not a good thing. So we'll continue now with uh, gluing up the wing a little bit, show you how quickly and easily this goes. What we're going to do is add a little bit of MEK to the Polytech. We need to reduce it just a little bit. As you can see, it's about the consistency of Cairo syrup here, which is just fine. It's kind of uh, reminiscent of the old Embroid cement, actually. And uh, you need to reduce it just a touch. MEK also seems to make it bond a little bit better. If you get much thinner than this, it tends to just soak into the wood, and uh, that's not a good thing. So now that we've got it reduced just a little bit, and there again, just dip the brush in MEK and, and dip it into the uh, polytac, and that's sufficient. Okay, we're going to apply this liquid glove, and it's a very, uh, very effective protection anytime you're working with chemicals. doesn't matter if it's the MEK or the toluene or our uh, epoxies, any type of model hobby epoxies, uh, this will work perfectly fine over any of that. And it uh, gives you about five hours of protection on your skin. They call it liquid gloves because it works exactly like uh, liquid gloves, oddly enough. But it's a, a mil-spec chemical. It's used by the military. 
You can literally wash your hands in MEK afterwards and it won't affect you. Some people are concerned about the MEK, about being a toxic chemical. If any of you have ever painted with dope in your lives, you've been around the MEK before. Dope is about 60% MEK. Uh, the MEK that we use is available at all hardware, paint stores, Ace Hardware. Um, most good hardware stores are going to have it available in quarts and gallons, but um, we prefer you buy it at your local hardware. It's a lot cheaper than us shipping it to you. We're applying the Polytech cement right onto the bare wood. No pre-coating necessary. And as you see, we're trying to keep the Polytech wet. And as we get the Polytech wetted down good, we're going to come back and apply the fabric right over the top of it. Actually, this can be done three different ways. You can apply the Polytech, allow it to dry, and then activate it with wet MEK. It can also be activated with heat. And as we said before, we want to pull the fabric over. It doesn't have to be really, really tight. And you just work it in with your fingers. As we're working, if you discover that you've laid the fabric on a skew or you've got a problem with where you've put the fabric and you want to remove it and reapply it, that's very easy to do. All you have to do is wet the area with MEK. It'll release the cement. You can lift the fabric, reapply the polytax cement, and do it again. Any time in the process, you can soften the cement with MEK, or you can remove the paint altogether with MEK. Decide you want to change the color of the airplane, just get a little MEK and start working on it. We're applying this to the bottom of the wing now, and we're just going to work our way along. And as we said uh, earlier in the video here, this dries very, very quickly. So you don't want to do much more than about a foot at a time. You can see that uh, I'm working short areas. The uh, Polytech cement will reactivate with MEK. It will reactivate with heat. So as you begin heat shrinking, you want to avoid the areas that you've cemented with real high heat. You don't want to go over an area that's uh, uh, wingtips and that sort of thing right where you've cemented it with a 350 degree iron. This product will shrink 10 to 12 percent at 350 degrees. which give you a pretty tight covering. We also like to point out about this phase that uh, this is called an uncertified fabric. It is not the same material that you use on a full-scale aircraft. It is lighter and uh, consequently it's uncertified works out great for models. Got a very high thread count and the high thread count allows it to fill with a lot less product. We'll just smooth the wrinkles out. If you have small wrinkles in areas like this and uh, as you're applying the polytech you can't quite get the wrinkle out, don't worry about it. If you come back with the iron and iron over that at about 200 to 250 degrees you can smooth all those wrinkles out with the iron. This process will work with an iron very well. You can smooth it. Just be careful not to go over about 350 and soften the cement while you're shrinking the fabric. and it, That will shrink it away from the seam then. Now we'll start working a little bit up here on the wing tip. Okay, what we're going to do now is turn the wing over. We've attached along the trailing edge of the wing. Keep in mind that we've not glued the leading edge and we've not glued anything to the ribs. We don't want to do that yet. We'll simply flip the wing over and then we'll attach trailing edge to trailing edge. Hey, keep in mind as we're doing this that it doesn't have to be drum tight. You don't have to get this perfectly tight 
as you apply it because it's going to shrink 10 to 12 percent for you. What we're interested in is to make sure that the cement is wet and to make sure that we've got a fabric to fabric bond here. And we'll just smooth out the big wrinkles and later on we'll kiss it with the iron a little bit and take off some of those lumps and bumps with the glue. Making sure we've got everything aligned. Right here in the middle of the fabric you'll notice a wrinkle from the fold. That won't be of any consequence. Those wrinkles will shrink right out as soon as we apply the heat. Any wrinkles in the fabric will be gone just as soon as we start, to start heating it. What we're going to do is lift the fabric here now and come back and apply this fabric from the bottom that we've attached and we're going to glue that on and then bring the top right over the top of it here. Being the scale aircraft this is, we have a concaved area where the aileron fits inside the wing. And what we're going to do is cement this with the polytech and then we're going to work the fabric into it really well so that we have polytech all along the inside of this concave curve. If you're doing a Corsair, bent wing Corsair, inside the bend on the wing, you want to do the same thing. Just cement it down real well any place that you don't want the heat to stretch it straight across a compound or a curve like this. Okay, on a wing tip such as this, what we're going to do is apply the fabric with the polytac cement, just polytacking the frame. And you'll notice that uh, all it takes is a gentle pull and the wrinkles come right out on the wing tips. This stuff works very well around compound curves. So just pull it around the wing tip and all we want is to bring the bottom of the fabric around the top and then take the top across it. And what we're going to end up doing then after we trim it we're going to put the finishing tape around the edge being a scale model. If this were not scaled and you didn't want to use the finishing tapes, you can hide the seam with, with a feather coat or super fill or any thicker fill material. And just show you here, we're just going to apply it to the wood. And while the polytac is wet, we're going to pull the fabric around the wing tip. And any wrinkles will just pull right out. And how long does it take to dry? It's dried. And now we'll simply come back. You don't have to be real careful with your trim here because this is all going to be hidden underneath. Sorry, Sam. Now we're going to pull the top over it. And this is where we get that uh, fabric to fabric seal that we talk about. We'll just glue the bottom layer of fabric across the top of the trailing edge here. find yourself sitting around the, uh, the old pot belly stove in the evenings chewing the cellulose off your fingers just like Ambroid. Shades of model building in years past. Now we're just going to pull it uh, taut and rub the uh, polytech in so that we've got a good smooth surface. Getting that fabric to fabric bond again. And you'll notice on this airframe we did not pre-coat the airframe with anything. We didn't pre-coat it with a poly brush. We didn't pre-coat with dope or anything like that. 
we've been asked, can you apply this with sticks it? Can you apply it with uh, CA? Can you apply it with Android? Actually, you can apply it with anything you like. We recommend Polytech. And the reason for the Polytech is it bonds polyester to polyester. We've got a little edge that we're going to cement up here. Glue that to the inside of the aileron bay. We'll let that dry just a tad. This is uh, how to do a wing tip. We've wrapped the bottom up around the top. And now we're going to do that uh, ever famous polyester to polyester bond. So we put the cement on top of the fabric now. And then we're going to pull the top of the fabric down over it. And this is what you want to do anytime you can with this process is you want polyester to polyester. As we do this, you notice how easily it forms around this wing tip. It's dried, it's light, it's right, it's tight. We've trimmed it and uh, what we want to make sure of is we have a good glued surface on the wing tip and the root of the wing. Because when we start heat shrinking, it's going to start pulling. So after we've got this glued down, we're going to wrap it around the edge. We're going to put the poly tack around it and make sure we've got a good glued seam all the way around here. We'll flip it over and do the other side. And we just work the brush in there and get the poly tack between the fabric and the wing surface. I like to take this edge and wrap it and get sort of a J effect, you might say, where I've wrapped the uh, top over the bottom. I've got a, another fabric to fabric bond here. Okay, here's a good opportunity to show you the wrinkles. We can come across with the iron and take those wrinkles right away. Okay, we're just going to anchor the uh, edge here. Anytime I can wrap the fabric 90 degrees around an edge, I like to do it. It just gives you that little bit more of a grip. We're going to glue this down and then we're going to put a piece of fabric over the top of it to, uh, to cover it and put our finishing tape on it. And we'll be done except for trimming and heat shrinking. Okay, here we have a nicely uh, covered wing. We've uh, Got it right to the point of trimming it now and heat shrinking. And we don't recommend trimming it until after you heat shrink. And the reason is if you trim right to the edge and you happen to pull the fabric away from the edge, that's a mistake that you have to address. And uh, that's one less mistake to deal with if you leave the fabric as we have it here with a little excess on it until after you heat shrink it. Be sure to calibrate the iron. We're very, very uh, strict about that. Every manufacturer wants you to calibrate your iron and use the proper heat shrink temperatures for his fabric. The best iron to use is the 21st century iron with the temperature marked on the dial. They're very, very accurate, plus or minus a half a degree or such. Uh, you can dial the temperature that you want and you're going to get that temperature. Uh, we would recommend the first time you use the iron at least once to calibrate it, make sure that you have the correct temperature and we sell a thermometer to do that with. It's manufactured by polyfiber and on the back of the thermometer the temperatures and shrink rates are all listed. It tells you exactly uh, what temperature to shrink to for your initial and for the final shrink. And uh, these thermometers run 695. The way to calibrate your iron is to take a stack of paper towels about a half inch thick, lay the thermometer on the paper towels, place your iron on top of the thermometer. I like to start at about 200 degrees and calibrate every 25 degrees, 225, 250, all the way up to 350. That way you can dial it anywhere you want. If you want to increase it to 350, you know where to go on the dial then. 
Okay, we're going to dial in about 275 on the uh, meter here. It's ready to use when it's blinking. Okay, let's start out on the uh, wing tip here and do a little pass over the wing. And this is just our initial shrink. We kind of take the lumps and bumps out of the glue along the edges. And we can just sort of feel where, where the initial shrink is taking us. If you have a delicate wing, if you have one that you're not real sure that it's going to go all the way to 350 degrees, just stop when you feel like it's tight enough. If this were taut enough, once we put the poly brush on, it's going to anchor it down. The closer you can get to 350 degrees, the better the shrink is. It's not going to let go. If you don't get it up past about 300 degrees, it's apt to wrinkle on you. And what I like to do is to hit one bay on one end, then go to the opposite end and hit the other bay and just work my way back and forth. So we'll catch this one and maybe this bay here. And there again, it's just the initial shrink. We're not doing a final tightening yet. And we'll come back to the bay over here where we left off. And the reason we didn't glue around the leading edge is as we're shrinking, it allows the fabric to just float around that leading edge now and not warp the wing. And we have pull-pull uh, cables on this particular wing and we've just sliced that to allow that to come through. And we'll flip the wing over for the camera now and we're going to continue shrinking. We'll start with the tip. Just shrink a little bit along the tip. Here are the hard points that mount the floats and a couple of little wrinkles and we'll just take those right out with the iron. And this being a scale airplane, anything that uh, we don't like we're going to cover with finishing tape later so we can hide a lot of this stuff. As we come across these hard points, you can see how the fabric is going to shrink around them. We'll shrink this and then catch the other end of the fabric. And we'll come back and just slice that with a razor blade and allow the fabric to come around the hard point then. Shrinking in two steps like this gives you a little more control over the fabric, a little more control over the shrinking. And you'll notice again, we, uh, we did not cement the leading edge. So it's going to allow that fabric just to float around the leading edge. And these two hard points here are the uh, jury struts for the wing. And this is at 275. And we're going to crank it up to uh, 350 and do our final shrink at 350. And this just starts taking 275 as where it just starts to shrink. And this is my control cable here, the pull-pull cable that we'll take out in a little bit. We're setting it to 350. The light's on continuous, meaning that it's heating up. When the light begins to flash, we're at the proper temperature. There we go, it's blinking and now it's ready at 350 degrees. This is the maximum shrink for the fabric. We'll do this bay and then go to the other end and do the other bay. And if you'll notice, there's no pressure on the iron to speak of. We're just, we're merely holding it close to the fabric and allow it to shrink. If you do see steam coming up or you do see smoke coming up from the fabric, it's not a problem. The only thing you're doing is releasing some of the moisture from the fabric. And sometimes you'll catch that in the video. You'll see uh, a little bit of steam coming up away from it, but uh, that's not a problem, nothing to worry about. You won't burn the fabric unless you're using a heat gun and you take it above 400 degrees, and at 400 degrees, it will do a little more than steam. It'll actually begin to melt. The threads go into elongation and starts to sag. Okay, before we flip it, we'll cut where these little areas are. And there's a couple of ways to do this. One way to do it without fraying the fabric, one way to do it and make a nice clean cut, is to paint around those hard points with poly brush. Okay, we're just going to nick this with a razor blade and allow the fabric to seat 
right around this hard point. Now on this particular airplane, this is where the floats mount. Just a little nick and the fabric goes down. You'll notice that the iron doesn't affect the poly brush as we're going around the wing tip here, or around this hard point here. Boy, does that shrink nice. It's not really necessary to, uh, to iron absolutely every inch of this down, but it's a good idea. As you're going across surfaces like this, the wood's going to take away the heat from the iron, and you want to make sure that, that that light is blinking and not unsteady, because if it goes unsteady, it means that you've, you've taken most of the heat away. And if you hear your airframe creaking and cracking as you're shrinking, it's just uh, applying a little pressure to it. Keep in mind while we're doing this that this is not a uh, large studio. We're not at one of the major networks doing this. This is done in Sam Wright's garage, and uh, his workshop, we're taking up very little space. It's not necessary to have a large area to do this in. You don't need a, a spray tent when we get to the spraying process. It's not necessary to build yourself a spray booth. It's not that technical. We're going to begin trimming here. And what I want to show you is you don't want to put the razor blade at this angle and cut like so. The reason is if you cut through the fabric on a surface, this fabric that you want to trim, you're very apt to go beneath that and catch the fabric below it that you don't want to nick in. The best way to trim is to hold the razor blade so that it's angled away from. Exacto knife, razor blade, doesn't make any difference. Angle it away from the fabric underneath and you want to pull the fabric into the blade. And as you run the blade along, just pull the fabric to it. A little bit of pressure each time, and you can trim it real cleanly, real nicely such. By trimming like this, you don't have the danger of cutting the fabric underneath. Now I've prepared this wing with some mistakes on it, and we thinned the poly brush way, way down to get the mistakes. And what I was trying to do was to get it to run through the fabric, which we finally accomplished. And uh, what we're going to show you is this little Hollywood here, where the fabric is actually stretched across and made a bubble. You can eliminate these kind of things by brushing the poly brush and penetrating instead of spraying the way I did it. Another way to do it is don't heat shrink over the solid areas uh, at 350 degrees. Just take the big wrinkles out. Places where you have runs like this, once we put that second coat of poly brush on after we've got the tapes, these runs are going to go away. Now we'll do the flip side real quickly, and on the flip side, you'll notice that some of the poly brush has dripped through. Areas that I got it really, really thin and allowed it to drip through, I've got runs on the other side of the fabric, and if you can feel it, you'll see it on the paint job. And some of these you can actually feel the poly brush. And we're going to show you how to take that out, and at any point in time, doing a repair job, or if you're trying to erase a boo-boo or repair this process. Repair is one of the easiest and best features of the stitch process. What we're going to take is a little MEK and we're going to wipe the fabric down with MEK. Now notice that we're wiping right over the area that has the run on it and we're not wiping the area that's been glued. If you wipe the area that's glued, you can lift it which in some cases may be a good thing because if you've made a mistake when you're applying the fabric, you can actually soak that area where it's glued down with the MEK, lift the fabric up, apply the polytech cement, and reapply the fabric. Now you can see how this is going away. This lump that we had here is virtually gone at this point. And we're able to clean up the wing and get rid of these areas just with MEK. Now if you had a uh, if you had a wing that you had dinged the wing tip on, you can take the fabric or take the paint all the way off, all the way down to bare fabric, 
by the same way. Any place that we have polytech that's built up, that we want to get rid of the polytech, we use the MEK and take the excess polytech off the same way. Some of these may look better than others. You'll notice here that all the poly brush that has come through the fabric and dripped to the other side of the wing we're able to take off. This side, that the runs are on the bottom, we won't even address those. We're going to paint over that because you can't even feel that. All those runs are underneath the fabric. Now on edges like this, where we have fabric that's a little bit folded over and some places we don't want it to be, there again we take the MEK, wipe the excess polytac off, and we're only wetting it enough to take the polytech off the outside. We're not soaking the fabric with it. If we were, we could lift the fabric right off. We're going to trim the fabric now, and this fabric has a light coat of the poly brush on it, and that's to harden the fabric. Once you put a layer of the poly brush on, the fabric will trim without getting those little fuzzies that we all hate. It'll trim nice and crisp. After it's trimmed, you'll feel a sharp edge along here of the fabric. We can take the iron and fold that edge down with the iron at about 200, 225 degrees. And that'll clean all the polytech up. The polytech can be reactivated with heat also. This is a tool we use at the trade shows to demonstrate how the product is used. Once you've got the fabric on and heat shrunk, it's a very simple process. You fill the weave with poly brush, and that's its sole purpose in life, is merely to fill the weave of the fabric. The second step is poly spray, which is the silver coat. Poly spray has talc in it for sanding. It has aluminum pigment. The aluminum pigment blocks the light so you don't see through the airframe. It makes it look more realistic. Polytone is simply the name of the paints. We have 120 colors available, and they all chemically bond together. The polytone bonds to the poly spray, which bonds to the poly brush. So that's the three-step process. Our next step is to fill the weave with the poly brush. And we're going to take a brush and do the leading edge, and we're going to do the solid surfaces here with the brush. That way we're going to be able to work the poly brush through the fabric, penetrate the fabric, and give you a secondary adhesive. You'll never see the fabric lift or bubble or wrinkle after we do that. The poly brush you buy from us is already pre-mixed. It's mixed three to one with reducer retarder 8500 or better known as RR8500. This is the right consistency for both brushing or spraying, either one. We're going to brush it so we can get the penetration we want. And just use one of these chip brushes, you want something with a fairly stiff bristle on it. You don't want the camel hair or the real fine bristles or, or a good brush. Just want something with a good stiff bristle so you can work the poly brush through the fabric. When you apply the poly brush, you want to see it soak through. You want to make sure you get good, even color on it. It has an oxide color in it. The oxide color is so you can see where you've been, so you can see where you've painted, where you've sprayed. Those of you that are building the Proctor models, World War I models where you don't want them to come out pink, we also have an untinted poly brush. It's kind of a white or creamy color. Harder to work with in this particular instance, but you don't end up with a pink airplane. What we recommend on a, a wing such as this where you have a solid leading edge or you have solid surfaces on the wing, you want to brush it in on those solid surfaces. Make sure you penetrate through the fabric with the poly brush. And then for the areas like the open bays of the wing, spray those areas and that way you won't get brush marks on them. If you're used to brushing, if you're familiar with dope, you're familiar with brushing with uh, solvent based products, by all means, continue on and brush the entire wing. Ray Stitz didn't name it poly brush for nothing. If you're brushing, 
and you decide to brush the entire wing, one thing to keep in mind is not go back and brush over the areas that you already have the poly brush on. It's only taken a few seconds to do the leading edge of this wing, but in those few seconds the poly brush has already begun to dry. If you go back over the, where we started, you're going to get brush marks. As we showed earlier in the video where we had the little bubble or the Hollywood here, if you're brushing the poly brush on as we are here, instead of spraying over the solid areas, you're going to avoid getting those hollows like that. Just to make sure we have good penetration through the fabric with the poly brush, we're going to brush over each rib. And this is exactly the same way we're going to apply the poly brush when we apply the finishing tapes. And mind you, this is the same area that we had the runs on previously that we took off with the MEK. The leading edge is pretty much dried out already. You can see how it's wetted out. You can see how the poly brush has penetrated through the fabric. This stuff will not lift and wrinkle after the poly brush is applied in this manner. It gives you a good secondary adhesion. If you notice bubbles in an area like this, simply take the brush and lightly brush across them. Get rid of those bubbles. We're going to paint this with one more coat. We're going to spray a coat of poly brush on now and blend all of this together. And after that first coat of poly brush is when we're going to apply the finishing tapes. By the way, the question comes up, what type of spray gun should I use with the Stitz products? Any gun that's used for enamel or lacquer is sufficient. We have several guns here on the table just to display the variety of guns you can use. Anything from the household touch-up gun, automotive gun, the Binks touch-up gun, these are all uh, medium automotive touch-up guns. This is a Binks, this is a sharp touch-up gun. Any of those will work just perfectly fine. Use about 30, 35, 40 pounds of pressure. You adjust the pressure until you get the pattern that you like. The gun we like to use is what's called high volume low pressure or an HVLP gun. This is a perfect example of it here. Several models of HP, HVLP available. One of the more expensive ends of the line is a turbine-powered HVLP. It has a two-stage compressor that run anywhere from $400 to $1,000. This particular gun is powered by just your everyday average compressor. This gun sells anywhere from $59 to $89 depending on the variations. This is a gravity feed gun. Put the material in the top. The material comes out the nozzle with a shield of air around it. You have very little overspray with this gun. It takes about 50% less paint with this particular type gun than it does your normal medium touch-up gun, average spray gun. The poly brush can be sprayed with any of the medium touch-up guns. Automotive touch-up guns work great. It can be done with the airbrush. It just takes a very long time to shoot it with an airbrush. And we're going to shoot at about 5 PSI with this particular gun. You can see the sheen on the fabric. and You can see that it's drying pretty fast. If we touch it, it's still just a little bit damp. We want it to be tacky, not wet. Some places you might even be able to see on the camera some of the pinholes in the fabric. If it looks a little rough, those are the pinholes. And those are exactly what we're going to fill. When we come back with a color coat and lay the wet coat of poly brush, we're going to eliminate all those pinholes. We're going to add a little more poly brush to the gun. And we're going to come back and lay our wet coat on now. And with this coat, it's going to really shine. We're going to eliminate all of those pinholes with this coat. With this tip, I'm going to show how to get rid of these pinholes. You can see we've got a nice solid sheen across there. As it dries, it's going to go from glossy to a semi-glossy finish. We started out with just a tack coat. 
Then we had some pinholes in it from the tack coat. Once that tack coat is sticky, come back and lay the wet coat. Get a good backlight so you can see where you've been spraying. Once you've got the wet coat laid on, if you see any areas where you've got a little pinhole left or any areas that don't look like they've been covered, don't be afraid to go back and just lay a little bit more on it. Wet those areas down good. Once you've got it sprayed, once you've got the poly spray on and you put the color on, the best thing you can do if you think you've got a mistake, if you think you've got a run, is to leave it. Walk away, come back 24 hours later and see if you can find it. Now I'd like for you to notice how much material we still have left in the gun. Using an HVLP gun like this uses a lot less material. About 75% of the weight that you spray on with this product is going to evaporate away. We're going to take a little break, clean up our gun, and we're going to revisit this project in about 15 or 20 minutes. It should be dry enough at that point to begin doing our taping. All cleanup with all of the products are with uh, MEK. Just put a little MEK in the brush, swish it around a little bit, clean the edges. And you're going to want to spray a little bit out the tip of the gun just to clean out your, your tip just a little bit. We'll uh, add a little MEK to it. Now, as you can see, there's uh, no material inside. There's nothing to clean up here. Just spraying a little MEK through the gun and your cleanup is finished. This is the Bible for covering and painting. In this booklet, we show you a graph on how far apart the spacing is on the stitching for the aircraft. Page 43 of this booklet, we address the width of the various tapes. The tapes are referred to as finishing tapes, uh, some people call them pinking tapes. They're not pinking tapes. They are technically pinked or finishing tapes. On the uh, full-scale airplane, two-inch tapes are used on the ribs. Two-inch tapes can be used on the leading edge and overlapped. Technically, you can use two-inch tapes everywhere on the aircraft. Most aircraft rebuilders, most classic restorers, use two inch tapes on the ribs and then they'll use either a three, a four, or a six inch tape on the leading edge. The reason we go into this is for your scale aircraft, you have to know what width tape you're going to use on the wing and where you're going to use it. This being a quarter scale wing, we're going to use half inch wide tapes on the ribs and we're going to use a one inch wide tape on the leading edge. What we're going to do here is apply a layer of the poly brush across the rib, lay the tape down on top of that, and then stipple across the top of the tape. We want to work the poly brush up from the wing up through the tape. That way we're going to get a void free laminate. And then after we've got all the tapes applied, we're going to come back and spray a coat of poly brush over the entire wing again. This coat will fill the weave of the tapes that we've now applied. And it'll also complete filling the weave of the fabric we've applied to the wing. We're going to start the process now and there's two different ways to do this. One is to wrap the tape all the way around the wing and the other is to bring the tape up and cut it off at the leading edge. We're going to apply a tape that goes all the way around the perimeter of the wing also so we're going to cover any seams that we have out here. Since this is on the wing tip and we have a taper it's easier to cut the ones on the wing tip and then meet them at the bottom with a separate layer. And then the tape goes down on top like such. We come back across. This is what the industry refers to as stippling. We're going to cut a double length like this to give us enough room to wrap entirely around the wing. Since this is the straight edge of the wing here, we're able to wrap the tape all the way around. Most of the full scale builders do prefer to wrap the tapes all the way around rather than to come up and cut each tape. Also, on a wing like this with the cub, the full length ribs are stitched. We'll have a method of stitching on this a little bit later in the video. These stub ribs right here, the little short ribs, have the tapes on them, but they're not stitched. 
We've applied the tapes to one side of the wing and uh, we've got enough overage on all of the tapes that we're going to do the other side. And all we're going to do is simply flip it over and apply the poly brush doing the same method that we had on the top of the wing. Apply the poly brush, lay the tape down. We finished with the rib tapes and now we're going to move on to the leading edge tapes and show you a couple of tricks and tips on how to do the uh, wing tips and any real tight radiuses that you have. This tape is cut from the same material the fabric is and it shrinks 10 to 12 percent at 350 degrees. We're going to use that shrink to take up the excess fabric in some of these tight corners. We're also going to show you how to clean up a few areas. You're going to get some drips and runs. You're going to get some places with little wowies in them. And we're going to show you how to fix those real quick and easy here. And then we're going to go on with the second step of the process, which is the poly spray. And then we're going to put color on it. Okay, now we want to remind you that we've, we've got our protective hand cleaner on, the invisible gloves, because we're going to be using MEK here. And we're going to have it directly on our skin. You're going to get little runs and drips like this. Uh, the way you put the tapes on is you put the poly brush on and then pull the, po the tape over the poly brush and then wick it up through the tapes. And as you do that, you're going to have excess that runs like this. That's not a problem because what we'll do is take just a little bit of MEK on a towel and we'll just wet that down with MEK and take that right out. Now, as you can see, it's getting lighter which brings up a point. This poly brush has an oxide in it and the only reason for it is so you can see where you've painted already. We also offer an untinted poly brush if you're doing one of the Proctor airplanes or World War I aircraft or uh, something that you don't want it to turn pink. We have untinted poly brush which has just kind of a white cast to it. So that's the way you clean those little areas up. All we're going to do now is hit this with a brush just in that one area and add the poly brush back to that area because we want to make sure we have the weave filled properly. The way this, this tape is attached on the end here is done with poly brush and the entire process is, is staying with poly brush now. We just put the poly brush on the very, very edge like this. Just the very edge and by doing it this way you can see that the fabric is going to be standing up perpendicular to the area. We'll put the poly brush around the edge, come all the way around to the very tip over here, and clamp it. And with just a little bit of a tug, a little bit of a pull, you can see that it starts to form around there. It doesn't quite get rid of the excess fabric. But we're going to show you how to do that. Turn your iron up to 350 degrees, and at 350, we'll just start ironing at about 45 degrees to the fabric here. You'll see the tape as it shrinks will just start to hug the wing tip. This will take all the excess fabric out and eliminate all those little cuts and nicks that you used to do. Imagine this is the edge of the wing. We just want to illustrate here with a, with a hot iron that what you want to do is just touch the very edge, just the very wing tip itself on the raw tape without the poly brush on it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have the iron touching directly on the poly brush or any of the paint later on at a high temperature because it will mar it. There again, you're just going to kiss the edge of it like so and the fabric is going to touch the, the iron at 350 degrees and it's going to shrink around the wingtip. Even though it's not attached, it is shrunk down and it's tight against the top surface. Now we'll come back later and we'll take the brush and work poly brush up underneath this so that we get a good bond. And all we're going to do is put the poly brush underneath and make sure that this sets down with poly brush again. Notice the scale stitching on this wing. This is actually done with Oral-B dental floss and it's done exactly the way the full scale aircraft are stitched. The stitching goes all the way around the rib and it's done with one piece from the beginning to the end. It's purely for aesthetics on a model, it's not necessary. On the full-scale airplanes, they do it because if the fabric didn't bond to the airframe and you took off, it could balloon like a bad convertible top and this is not a good thing. Um, you would probably be the first pilot to fly that airfoil and more than likely the last. And that's why they use stitching on the full-scale aircraft. Now on the models, we have several ways of doing the phony stitching. All we want to do is replicate a bump in the finishing tapes. 
one of the ways to do it is after your first coat of poly brush, come back and lay just a little glue mark where the stitches would be. On a full scale airplane, the stitches are two inches apart. So if you're dealing with a quarter scale model, they'd be a half inch apart. So just put a little glue mark, RC56, aliphatic resin, white glue. Just take a hypodermic needle and make your little glue marks across there. And then put the tapes across the top of the glue. Another process that uh, Danny Gayhart came up with recently, which worked quite well, is exactly the opposite you would think. You put the tape on. After you put the tape on, you put the glue mark on top of the tape. With the glue marks on top of the tape then, after you've painted it, it looks exactly like a full-scale aircraft. It's an excellent method for doing it. It's just a little backwards from what you would think. Now this is what the finished product looks like after we have the poly spray on it. This is just before your final color coat. We all know that the Spirit of St. Louis was silver, so it didn't have a final color coat. The color was silver. We're just going to put a little bit of glue on a T-pin. And then we're going to make a horizontal mark on the stitch with this T-pin. And that's all you want. It's just the hint of a stitch behind there. And the stitches on a full-scale airplane are about two inches apart at this point. So we're going to make ours at about a half inch. If you want to really be accurate, you could attach a chalk line here, stretch the chalk line all the way across the wing, and snap a mark every half inch. We're talking a model airplane here. Let's not get too finicky. Okay, keep in mind when you're doing these that on a full-scale airplane, the stitches will be underneath the tape. As you pull the tape over the stitches, sometimes it's difficult to get a void-free laminate, so you'll end up with little bubbles and rises. The stitches on a full-scale airplane, although the stitching may be perfect, the tape over the stitch may be bubbled closer in some places, farther away from the fabric in other places. So don't worry if the, uh, if the little marks are not uniform because that, that will be exact scale. And your question may obviously be, where do I put the first one? Your first stitch should be half the distance between the stitches. In this case, it's a quarter scale airplane. The stitches will be a half inch apart. The first stitch will be a quarter of an inch from the edge, a quarter of an inch from the leading edge of the aircraft. We have just a couple of examples of the glue you can use here. The RC-56 or Elmer's aliphatic resin, wood glue, any, uh, any thick water-based glue will work. Don't be shy when you're putting the bumps down. You can see that it looks as though this one has disappeared. Actually, it hasn't. As the glue dries, it just dries clear. And you'll notice this row here almost looks as though it's disappearing. Several of them have dried clear. That's just the glue drying and shrinking. And that's all you want is just the effect. You don't want an obnoxious lump there. You just want the hint that it's stitched beneath it. I'm going to trim these tapes off. And uh, you'll go through quite a few razor blades or X-Acto knives as the fabric is quite tough. But you'll notice with the poly brush on the tape how crisp and how easily it cuts. And we'll come back now with uh, another piece of tape. We'll cover one inch tape across this. Every edge all the way around the wing, all the way around the control surfaces, the entire wing should be taped. And all we're going to do now is just come through and clean up these tapes, trim them off. Full scale is done the same way, by the way. What you don't want to do is try to put the poly brush through the top of the tape. You're not going to get as good a bond. You want to put the brush underneath, work those bristles underneath there, just like that. And then quickly smooth it out and get away from it. We have all of our tape sealed now. We've sealed all the way around the tip and we've got all of the simulated stitches on and you'll notice the stitches are just about gone. As we put our first coat of silver on, these will all come back out and you'll be able to see the marks that we've made on the tapes. For those of you asking how many colors we have, 
Our color chart has 42 of the most popular colors. In our price list, we list 120 colors that are available. This process is a very simple process. It's three steps. Fill the weave of the fabric, one coat of the poly spray on, and then your color coat on top. Okay, the next step of the process is the poly spray. The poly spray has a lot of talc and aluminum pigment in it. The talc is for sanding, the aluminum pigment is so you don't see through the airframe for the models. The full scale aircraft, they put three cross coats of poly spray for UV protection. You want to be sure to stir the paint because the aluminum pigment and the talc settle out real easily on this poly spray. Shaking is not sufficient, you have to stir it. Put a stick in the can and stir the paint. We're going to use our HVLP gun to spray the poly spray on with. HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. We're only using about 5 psi to spray here. We've got a drop cloth down, we're spraying inside the studio because it's raining outside. This can be sprayed indoors, outdoors, doesn't really matter. It'll dry in about 15 or 20 minutes at uh, about 75 degrees. What you want to do first is just lay a fog coat on. We're just going to get enough paint on to turn it silver. Let that fog coat just get tacky and then we'll come back and lay the wet coat on. After this tack coat is just tacky, we'll come back and lay our final coat on. And this coat will be a good wet, thick coat. We've addressed a few little areas that we saw that uh, when you put the silver on, you'll find areas on the wing that you didn't know existed that need attention. We want you to notice the uh, stitches here and how they stand out once we've got the silver on. Same thing's going to happen when we color it, but silver just seems to make all the imperfections just jump right out at you, plus all the detail work that you work so hard to put in. We're down to the last step of the process here, which is spraying the polytone on. We started by filling the weave with poly brush, which is the pink stuff, went to the poly spray, which is the silver, and polytone, which is our color. This particular wing, we're going to paint white. We're going to do it the same way we painted the poly brush into poly spray. You lay a light fog coat on, just enough to start seeing the color. Let that sit just long enough to get tacky. When that's tacky, we'll come back and lay a wet coat on it. As we've said many, many times before, this paint will chemically bond into the poly spray, which chemically bonds to the poly brush. It's all one unitized layer when you finish. Here's what you're looking for when we talk about a tack coat. You can see and you can even hear, it's just tacky to feel. You're not getting any stringy paint that comes up. That would have been a little too early. And it's not quite dry yet. It's just tacky. Now we'll lay our wet coat on. Well, this is our final coat, and uh, the shininess that you see here, this is our final wet coat. That'll go away. The, uh, the final sheen of the product is a satin finish. We also have available a high gloss clear coat, which will give you this about, about this amount of gloss to your paint. There's a couple of tricks to making the paint gloss. One of them is you can uh, put your paint cup have your paint in the cup ready to spray and put the paint cup in the freezer and leave it overnight. 
when you get ready to spray the next morning, the last thing you do is take the spray gun, put the cup on it straight out of the freezer and spray your aircraft and it'll gloss on you. Basically what you're doing is you're, uh, you're slowing the drying time of the paint and by slowing the drying time you're going to allow it to gloss. If you pick your wing up in such a manner, you're probably going to feel like it's a little bit heavy, which it will be. It still has the solvents in it. As these solvents evaporate, you're just going to leave the pigment and flexure behind. The wing's going to get lighter by the hour. Come back 24 hours later and pick it up, it's going to be extremely lightweight. If you're going to paint the airplane, and that has to be our disclaimer, if you're going to paint the airplane, our process is going to come out lighter. You're going to use fewer coats of this process than you do with dope. If you're using uh, any type of a two-part epoxy, whatever you spray on weight-wise is going to stay on the aircraft weight-wise as it's curing, it's not evaporating. This process is evaporating. If you have a flaw, if you have something on your wing, if you see a little run or something that you, you think you need to address right away, don't touch it. The best thing to do, lay the wing down, lay the part down, let it dry, give it 24 hours, and come back and see if you can find it. Chances are you'll never find it. As the paint flows, as it's biting into the cover underneath, and as it's stabilizing, a lot of those little things are going to go away and you'll not need to address them. Now if you need to do any sanding, you can use 400 or 600 wet or dry paper. The uh, Polytone sands quite well. The Poly Spray sands well, excellent. At any point in the process, if you feel like you need to go back and add some poly brush to fill a pinhole, if you need to add a little poly spray to get some talc in there for some filling, you can interchange the product back and forth as you do that. So. Don't be afraid to experiment with it. It's a very, very versatile product. Now we'll put this wing down. I want to show some stuff on the other wing. Now as you can see on this wing, this is actually stitched. The holes are pre-punched in the fabric and it's stitched with the, uh, the same knot, the same technique used on full scale. This particular stitching is Oral-B dental floss. And the only reason this was done was to show exactly how the full scale is done. Remember on a model, you're just replicating, you're just going for the effect. It's an illusion. You notice where the tape, the finishing tape, begins covering the stitches here, and you'll notice the little lumps and bumps on the stitches. We got that same effect on the video by using white glue, aliphatic resin, RC56, on the white wing we have here. We have the same effect done with glue on top of the tape as opposed to underneath the tape. You'll notice that we get the same effect by using glue on top of the fabric here, on top of the finishing tape as opposed to being underneath it. It's much easier to do and you don't have to worry about getting a void-free laminate with the tape over the top of those bumps.